Now on GMA with a look at chemical hair straighteners and the potential dangers. And as the FDA continues to consider a ban on the formaldehyde that's used in some of these products, the New York Times has a major overview chronicling the scientific research and suggesting that this substance is linked to certain cancers among black women. Joining us now, New York Times contributing writer Linda Villarosa and ABC News medical contributor Dr. Darian Sutton. Thank you both for being here. We were chatting all through the break. Linda, you started this year's long investigation and you we're just interested because you've you've been there. You've gotten a perm before. You in your grandmother's chair in, in the house. We've been there before. Tell me what you found. What I found was a link between hair, the chemicals in hair relaxers, and a number of cancers that plague Black women. And the research was driven by Black women epidemiologists, and it culminated in 2022 with a study that made an explicit as association between these chemicals that are marketed to us as safe and natural and uterine cancer. And th you just said that's marketed as safe and natural. Dr. Darian, how... how Tell us about the potentially concerning, what's potentially concerning about those ingredients in hair straighteners. Well, Janae, I think it's the chemicals themselves, as, as Linda in her writing uh, explained, when you look at the chemicals like formaldehyde and methylene glycol, we know from science that these chemicals have a known association to the increased risk of cancer and disrupting the natural hormone balance within the body. And given their popular use among women of color, it, it begs the question, could they be associated to the disproportionate rates in uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, and also early puberty, fibroids, and then even it extends beyond that, cardiovascular disease and diabetes. But as Linda was saying, this is more of an association. We don't yet have a clear cause and effect, but nonetheless, it's clear that you want to avoid these chemicals as much as possible. And, and so, so, Linda, while the FDA is, is, while we're waiting for the FDA to make that decision, what do consumers need to keep in mind? Because you went into a shop. Women are still getting their, their hair relaxed. I think what you should think about is lowering your toxic burden on your body. So that means if you choose to use a hair relaxer, don't use it as often. And also be cautious because the problem really is burns and abrasions that allow the chemicals to enter your scalp. I think the other thing is we can straighten our hair with heat. And as the growing natural hair movement has shown, uh, we can wear our hair in, we have many different options and every option is beautiful. Oh, and come on girl, you are showing us with the cornrows this morning. I was telling you how much I love it. I love it. I've got the curls. <laughs> Dr. Sun, you look amazing too. What, tell me though about the challenges because I mean, in, in society we have long suspected mm. this correlation, mm. but it's hard to point to it. The so FDA hard. is looking into it, but why, how, what's the challenge in getting over that hump? I think we just need to expand research and we need to make it more diverse. Uh, research has always faulted in including us. And so mm. I think that this is one of those examples where we need to be studied so that we can understand what are our risks so that doctors like myself can explain those risks to patients and also just in general explaining it to our families. Okay, but from what we know out there right now, there are risks. There yes. are risks. Okay. Yes. Thank you both so much. Thank you for that reporting, Linda.